Hello YouTube, welcome to RV Daydream. Portable power station time, yes. This is the biggest power station that we reviewed and I'm gonna tell you this thing is a beast. How much of a beast is it? Well, let's get into the details. What have you been up to? I've been riding on a daydream. The company is called Ace Volt Cam Power 2000. Now they have another one that they're gonna be coming out with that they're actually pushing more than this one and it's a 750 watt. Uh, 2000 is kind of on the high end of things. This is for the people that are a little bit more hardcore, want to stay out a little bit longer, and they want to push their stuff a little bit harder, running on battery power. So take a look at either one of them, uh, the 750 watt, if you think this one's a little bit too big. But 2000 watts, this thing, again, is a beast. It has 3500 cycle lifespan uh, to 80%. Uh, you know, 80 so for 3,500 discharge recharges uh, until it will only recharge back up to 80%. And of course, this is a lithium iron phosphate. It's a very stable battery um, as far as the uh, building of the BMS that's in there. The fast charge that is built in, yes, this has a built-in fast charge available. Uh, it can recharge from zero, so dead, just dead where it shuts off, to 100% in 110 minutes if you plug into a normal AC outlet. You know, and I'm talking one of these outlets right here, just a regular household outlet. So man, think about that. If you can run this completely dead and then it will recharge in basically a couple of hours. Usually something like this, you have to go, you know, overnight uh, and it does have a built-in adapter, you know, the, the power inverter, it's all built in. There's no brick or anything like that. Is it's relatively portable. This thing is kind of heavy. I think we're in about the 50 pound range for this. Um, definitely, you know, a little substantial, but it does give you a couple of really nice handles on top. And as far as when you're using it as a battery source, let's say you have a little refrigerator and you're in your RV and you want to go down the road and you want to keep that little refrigerator going. So you plug in the refrigerator to this portable power station. Then you plug the portable power station into the RV. When you're driving down the road, this thing will run the refrigerator. The battery portable power station here will run the refrigerator. But if you happen to stop for the night, maybe you're just plugging in uh, for the night, or maybe you've gotten to the campground, you don't have to go through the trouble of unplugging your refrigerator. You can just power up the RV, and this will charge and continue to bypass and run the refrigerator direct through the AC. It has a UPS. It's uninterrupted power supply. Pretty simple stuff for uh, you know, a lot of things that have been out there for years, but some of the portable power people, whenever they're putting together their unit, they're not putting that in. They're not doing that, which I'm not sure why, because this makes it to where you're not unplugging and plug. Oh, I got to switch it, you know, and believe me, we think about that stuff whenever we're camping, even with our large fifth wheel, we've got to worry, okay, is it on gas? Is it on electric? And, you know, sometimes you're setting up camp and the first thing we can do is plug in our RV but we don't have chance, you know, a chance to put out all the slides and get to the refrigerator and change it from gas to electric. Even though we have electric available, that's what this is set up to do. So you don't have to worry about that. And I'm just giving you the refrigerator as an example. You can use it for pretty much anything that when you have power, it will power it direct through itself. It'll bypass the battery. And when you don't, um, it will, uh, run off of the power source. Now, like with anything that we have, uh, there's going to be a link down in the description for this. This was sent to us at no charge for a review. As far as longevity, all that stuff, you've heard me talk about it in the past. I can make this fail within a week. I can make this thing fail in a day. I can also make it last for a long time. And whenever you get into making a purchase that is pretty substantial, you know, you want to pay attention to what you're doing. And if you have a problem with this, if you have a simple problem that is caused by the manufacturer, if something happens, they have a two year warranty. If you get it and you just don't like it, they have a 30 day return. 
But if you have a problem, they have a two-year warranty on this. Let them know what's happening. Let them, you know, give them a chance. And the other thing that you have to worry about with some of these is noise. Some of these things are noisy. They have cooling fans and it's obnoxious. This one is low noise by far and it does quite a bit on a charge. For example, a laptop, you know, like a regular like MacBook uh, will charge it roughly 31 charges. Now, the MacBook has a pretty good battery in it, so you can imagine. A phone, of course, you know, a typical phone, uh, like a iPhone 12, 154 times this will charge. Obviously, I think you'd be a little crazy to have to do that, but you guys with drones, 42 charges. So again, if you have this fully charged, you go out, you're in the field, and you have a whole group of people flying drones with you, all of you can take turns recharging your drones. 42 of you. Uh, CPAP machines. You guys with CPAPs, I'm sure you're wanting to know. This thing will run a 50 watt CPAP, 33 hours. Uh, as far as a little mini refrigerator, uh, cooler, it, you know, anything that's like 60 watt and under, uh, 28 hours. Uh, if you have a 1000 watt coffee maker, you could do 18 pots of coffee. Um, toaster, 50 to 7 slices. You know, I don't think that we're going to be counting the slices and who knows what the wattage is of their toaster. Uh, it says a thousand watt. Hair dryer, if you get girls that are out there in the field, uh, you camp in a tent, you want to be able to do your hair. Uh, 1600 watt hair dryer, you can do it for an hour. Hope it don't take an hour for you to dry your hair though, you got other problems. Electric grill, 102 minutes. A microwave, a thousand watt microwave, which I don't even think our RV microwave is a thousand watt. You can run it for 102 minutes. Uh, blender, so for you guys that are out there and you're partying and you're out in the desert and you guys want to have your uh, margarita uh, Mondays or whatever, 204 minutes for a 500 watt blender. So very, very capable. Let's get this thing out of the box and take a look at the fit and finish and uh, what we think about it. Okay, so before we do the unboxing for you guys that love the stuff, the little freaky stuff that they offer, uh, of course, it's a pure sine wave AC output that's safe for computers and your uh, sensitive electronics. This has dual fan cooling, so there's two cooling fans. The thing is, is they're telling it's low noise, but with anything that has a fan, you're going to hear some noise, that's for sure. Um, again, what we talked about, that supercharger, uh, two hours from zero to 100%, just plugged in the wall. It has a 4.9 inch uh, display that lets you know what's happening. Low battery reminder, battery management system, huge capacity, 1,997 watt hour standby. And this is the details that you guys love. Uh, I'll go ahead and just uh, show you this real quick. You can uh, take a look at it, see what is important, see what's not important. I don't really care one way or the other about this stuff. I just want to know if it works. People love these unboxings. We're, we're told all the time that people love unboxings. I guess if you want to see what it looks like coming out of the box, it's, it's interesting to see. First thing, little foam padding. Second thing, a thick manual. Is this more than one? Nope. All right, so obviously we know what this is. This is for your solar input. This goes directly to your solar panels. Make sure your solar panels have the corresponding black and red uh, and the, the connections are correct, black and red, because we've had some stuff in the past that's been reversed of what it's actually supposed to be. So this is nice if you're going to do a solar hookup. And then this here, I have no doubt, this is the power cord. Now, of course, if you're in a different country, you're going to have a different power cord, but this is the U.S. version, so it's going to be a traditional, you can see here, just three prongs, so with a ground. And then, you know, this is like a, a computer setup. That looks, looks like a computer cord. Pulling this out, and now we're getting to the unit itself, all wrapped up in a big baggie. All right, so massive unit, almost all battery powered. This is kind of cool. This is where the connectors are, so this is your input. You can't screw that up. Overload protection, if you have a problem there. Nothing on the back side. Just some information about the unit, but uh, other than that, look at this beast. 
5 volt 2.4 amp USB, so there's two of those. Here's a QC 3.0 right there. Um, here is the uh, button for the USB and then of course type C's. That's how new this is. Everybody's going to this type C. Our phones have type C. Why, why wouldn't this? So if you're trying to power anything USB wise, you would plug it in and then push this button and that would give you a display and let you know what's happening there. Uh, as far as if you're trying to charge or run anything, there's a cigarette lighter, 12 volt, 10 amp, pretty traditional there. You have these connectors here, which is pretty standard. You can buy these on Amazon. I see them all the time. They're three amp. I've never really messed with that. So as far as this panel, I don't know if I would use anything on here. This definitely, and then this is definitely the money here. This is the AC output. Go ahead and put that open and look at all those. That gives you an idea, right? That gives you an idea of what this thing's capable of. Of course, if you plug into here, then you're gonna to wanna to push this button to activate all that stuff. And again, the display out front will show you what's going on. What's that look like? Long press on the power button, gives you a little audible beep. I hear the fans kicking on, and there is a bunch of crazy stuff on the screen that we can't see. Yeah, even with this turned back, even in the shade, I mean, it's very hard to read. So uh, that might be a, a kind of a deal breaker for you. Um, I don't think so. It's just you have to know what it says. And it's just a little bit difficult to read. Um, it says currently right now it's 84%. Uh, I can see that there is uh, a 32% number there, but without this being in a darker climate, and I'll be honest that we are on a nice hot summer day, Heidi will pan you around. You can kind of see, I mean, the sun is out full force. There's very few clouds, but I would think that that would be something that if people are outdoors, um, you know, moving around, uh, that would be something they want to be able to read pretty easily. I want to see what it does here. Now the fan's noisy um, that's on this thing, but it's not crazy. Plug that in, push the button for AC power. Go ahead and turn this on. And again, you really can't see. It just says how long is remaining. As far as the time, looks like that it's, uh, wow, six hours. Wow, it says it's got five hours. It just dropped to five hours remaining. And the battery's only at 32% right now, as far as the way it came shipped. And again, uh, any of these outlets are powered by this one button. So if you have stuff plugged in here, you don't have to worry about, oh, I got to unplug it, plug it back in, turn it off, whatever. You can do all that from that single button. All right, so who is this for? Well, this is for the people that are a little bit hard, more hardcore than we are. Uh, somebody that's really into solar, somebody that's boondocking quite a bit more than what we are. This is a good source for a battery that would be comparable to a big lithium iron phosphate battery that you would have on board your RV. If you guys remember, we have a 200 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery on our RV. We had to change the charge controller. We also had to change, um, you know, the setup to where the battery box was on the RV. We didn't have to if we had this. We could have just placed this in our pass-through storage, or I'm sorry, our front storage of our fifth wheel, and we could have ran in a couple of cables uh, from the Solar Direct, and it could have ran on this. It could have. Um, this would allow you to do basically the same thing with your RV. If you don't want to go through the trouble of trying to outfit it with all the stuff, and you want it all in one thing, maybe you're going to be switching RVs and you don't want to go to the trouble of putting all that solar on the roof of your RV, this is the way to go. Maybe your RV is overweight because you have a little pop-up camper and uh, you know you need to have some sort of power whenever you get to where you're at. You can throw this in the back of your truck. Once you get there, take it out, then throw it in the camper once the camper's popped up and you got a lot more room. So the links will be down below for this. Probably one of the biggest, yeah, this is definitely the biggest battery source that we've ever had. And the way the layout is, everything about it looks great except for the display, not being able to read it very well in the bright sunlight. You know, this might be just the problem that I'm coming up with and it's not really too much of an issue. Links are down below. We appreciate you guys watching. And as always, we hope to see you out here. Bye.